Hey guys, Trance here, back with another Transformers video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Studio Series figures. Now looking at the first Studio Series figure on the list, we got Studio Series World War II Bumblebee. Now this Bumblebee figure looks really cool, I gotta say. I like how they did the hammer, and I definitely like how they did that gun. And the gun looks exactly how it was in the film, like it should be because it is a Studio Series figure, but also the whole design of this toy itself. All the aesthetics look pretty good besides that kibble, and I'll get to why there's a lot of kibble in a second. But beside that kibble, I also found something new that they did with the feet. And if you look at the feet, you can see a tire. Now with all the other Bumblebee figures, the tire is actually not really into center. But now they actually did put it in the center, which looks really movie accurate. It also has that little spur piece over there, which makes the tire look really good. I also do want to point out with the head sculpt, it looks like they took the last night Bumblebee head, but they redid it a little bit so it does not have those lines by the top of the head. And also it looks like this Bumblebee also has an Autobot logo up there. So that's also really cool. I also do like all this paint apps on here and I think it's really good for what you're getting. You have this all this drab green and then you have all these silver highlights through it and it looks really cool. Now we're looking at the vehicle mode for Bombi. It looks really cool but there is one really big inaccuracy with it and that inaccuracy is he's the wrong car. Because in the film, he was like a car, kind of like a convertible, but now he's kind of like this armored truck with a gun sticking out, which is actually the hammer, which is pretty cool. But I honestly don't know why they went with this car, because I think if they did a convertible, it would have been more easier to translate that into robot mode, so it would not have that much junk. But it still looks like an awesome car. I also do like how it has all that dust on it. And the only thing I don't really like about this mode is if you look under the grill, it has that big old cluttered piece, which looks like Bumblebee's chest, I think, all folded up under there. Or maybe it's like a back piece or something. And here is an in-hand version of Bumblebee. And as you can see, his gun actually makes it another gun that's on top of the car. And as you can see in the background, it's where Bumblebee was fighting those Nazis, which is pretty cool. And assuming that they're gonna stick with this last night toys that did not come out, I'm pretty sure they're gonna make a hot rod pretty soon, which would definitely go really good with this Bumblebee. Bumblebee figure. In all in all, I give this a 7 out of 10 in the Studio Series ranks, so I'll be definitely picking up this toy. Now taking a look at the next Studio Series figure, the next Studio Series figure, it's Barricade. Now looking at Barricade, it definitely resembles a lot from the movie masterpiece Barricade that came out a few months ago, and definitely a combination of the Dark of the Moon, Deluxe Barricade, especially in the feet. Now this Barricade definitely looks like the best Deluxe Barricade we will ever get, and we ever had. Like, the details on this thing, especially in the chest area, that is unbeatable, that's like MPM quality right there. The feet are straight out of the Dark of the Moon Barricade, just with a little bit more paint, and where it says police is a little bit different from the Dark of the Moon Barricade toy, because on the Dark of the Moon barricades, I believe they were flipped. Also, that spike weapon definitely looks like it had inspiration from the MPM barricades. And those hands especially come from the Dark of the Moon barricade and a combination from the MPM one, just because how long they are. I also do want to point out is that beautiful head sculpt on barricade. I love how it has the blue. I would definitely prefer purple more. But, you know, it's still a Studio Series figure, and they may make a Dark of the Moon one, which they probably will because they are making a lot of repaints, as we've seen in the past. But we can't use a pass as this because Studio Series figures are really unpredictable at this point in time. And I also do want to point out all the detail that's on of his neck area. As you can see, it has like all those mechanical bits. And also one point I do want to point out is, as in the Dark of the Moon barricade, he has those windows that go up. Now I think this barricade also has that too, as we'll see in the vehicle mode in a second. But I think they're angled down. But for me personally, once I do buy this figure, I'll be pointing those up just to give him more of like a spiky silhouette. Now looking at Barricade in this gorgeous vehicle mode, it looks so clean. And this thing, this thing, man, it, it's just great. Looking at this, this is like the cleanest Barricade figure I can ever think of. Even those panels on the doors aren't as dirty as it was on the MPM of having those lines. But now it's all just one crystal crisp piece without having any of those lines which looks really cool it also has a in punish and enslave logo it has a decepticon logo but it doesn't look like it's purple but it looks like it's black which kind of blends in with the thing and i honestly don't mind but i would like it be purple just because of movie aesthetic but if it's black that's kind of fine one nitpick with this vehicle mode would be the headlights and they're just black and they're not painted but probably repo labels will hook us up with a set to give them some headlights but all in all i give the studio series figure a 9 out of 10 and I'm definitely going to be picking this guy up because he's that cool. Also, I forgot to mention was the backdrop for Barricade. And as you can see, it's from the first movie battle where Bumblebee battled him in that, like, wire place. But I think it was an electrical plan of some sort. And as you can see, there's Barricade and his beautiful car mode with the weapon aside. So you can detach it and reattach it. Now looking at the next Studio Series figure, it's Studio Series Sideswipe. 
Now looking at the sideswipe figure, this thing looks gorgeous, especially with all that silver paint. This thing looks freaking amazing. Now I know I may be overstretching this thing and how great it is, but it honestly deserves all this greatness. And in my opinion, once we get into some in-hand photos, this may be the best Studio Series figure to date, and I'll tell you why. First of all, those swords are not part of the car. Those are a separate piece, which actually is now more movie accurate, and now he don't have all those panel lines when he's in a vehicle mode, which is definitely a plus. He also comes with two guns, which we'll see in the in-hand photo. And overall, this is just a beautiful looking sideswipe figure. And if you don't know, this is for the Dark of the Moon series, so he actually does have those seats, which we'll be looking at when he's transformed into a car. I do want to point out that this sideswipe figure, just by looking at it, is definitely going to have a lot of posability. And if you have like any Revenge of the Fallen sideswipe figure, especially the sidearm sideswipe, which is a completely different mold from the original sideswipe figure, I think it was maybe tweaked or something in the arms, but if you have that, you can basically see where this sideswipe is going to be going, and how it moves and stuff. I also think those top bits up there is different from the sidearm sideswipe figure, because they look like they're on a ball joint piece but I could be wrong. Also the back of Sideswipe's head looks really good because the original sidearm Sideswipe had a lot of junk over there but here it doesn't even look nearly as what it had in the past. The last thing with this robot mode that I wanted to point out is, is Sideswipe's face and if you look at it, it has some gorgeous paint apps. You can see a darker face, a lighter uh, helmet piece, and, and good old blue eyes for Sideswipe. And I can't wait to see this actually in a video of someone reviewing this because this figure of Sideswipe by far is the best version of Sideswipe we have ever gotten. This even beats out the Human Alliance Sideswipe for me. Now looking at Sideswipe in his vehicle mode, he even <laughs> looks better. We can actually see those seats in there and actually a steering wheel which looks a lot better than the original Dark of the Moon figure on how they did it. But we don't know if this has like an interior piece because I don't know if you guys remember in the original Dark of the Moon Sideswipe, there's kind of like a hole there but we don't know for this figure. But even if there is a hole, it doesn't really mind me that much for this figure because if you look at the seats alone, that's a completely different piece than the original. And I believe they can fold down and stuff which looks really cool. And speaking of that ball joint piece earlier from the doors, these doors may be able to open which makes this toy even more cool. I also do want to point out that the tires look really cool and yet again, this, this this is a really good accuracy from Studio Series figures, and I can't wait to see the new figures that are going to be coming out soon. The last thing I want to point out the Sideswipe figure is, is those vents. Now, those vents, man, they, it looks so accurate to what he had in the film. And if you look at the door pieces, he actually doesn't have that much panel line. And honestly, this whole thing doesn't really have that much panel line. You can kind of see it faint, but it hides it really well. But that could be just because it is a CGI image, and it may be different once we do get it in box. Now, here is an in-hand version of Sideswipe, and we can see that his backdrop is the Mexican standoff scene. And as you can see in the shot, we can see both of those guns that he had in the Mexican standoff scene, along with his vehicle mode again and his robot mode. And another thing I want to point out this robot mode is his pex pieces, or those, uh, his light pieces, or his chest, I believe they can move if you move the arms. Kind of like how we had in the movie. It, th that level of detail is really good to translate into a toy. And for this to be around 30 bucks with all this paint and all that posability, this is definitely a steal. The next Studio Series figure that we're going to be taking a look at is Crankcase. Now, Crankcase here is not really Crankcase. Crankcase is basically a repainted version of Crowbar, which really makes no sense why you would call it Crankcase. Just call it Crowbar and release him as that. You could just release him as the repaint line that was basically Wave 3. There's no need to call him Crankcase in any other way, but... Th th this disappoints me, you know? They could have just added a Crankcase head or basically re-released Berserker and I would have been fine. Just take the X away from Berserker and slap on the name Crankcase, we would have been good, but... Come on, Hash, bro. Redone version of Crowbar? Just with better paint? You didn't even switch the head. Look, I wouldn't even be mad if they kept the dredge and switched the head, but th this is just laziness. If you look at the side swipe, so it's so much disrespect in what Hasbro's doing here. Like, you see such a cool character. Yes, it's from a reused mold, but they did so much new to it that it completely makes it a new figure. But then you look at Crankcase over here, which they just used Crowbar and painted him up a bit, and yeah. Kind of disappointed with that, but let's look at some positives like I said earlier. It's a lot better paint than the original crowbar, so if you ever missed out on the original crowbar, use this as your crowbar figure. It looks 10 times better than the original, and that's basically all I can really say about this figure because we already got this in the past. And here is its vehicle mode. It's the exact same. Nothing has changed because it's just a reused model. 
Now looking at a prototype version of him, here he is, and this is with him with golden dreads for some reason. I have no clue why, I guess they're trying to do the dread look, but even if they had like the CJM model for Crankcase, why the hell would you use a crowbar figure? Come on Hasbro, are, are they that dumb? But looking at this, eh, the background is exact same as Sideswipes, and it's the Mexican standoff, where it was basically Crankcase's last stand, and he died. Now looking at the last Studio Series figure of today, it's Studio Series Beater B. Now you can see the robot mode, and it doesn't really show what Beater B actually had, so we're going to be looking at the vehicle mode. Now looking at the vehicle mode, you can already see all of the rust on him, and it, it kind of looks really accurate to what he had in the film, and I really like this, because the original uh, Bumblebee was like a clean version of this, and then you can get like a dirty version from the 2007 movie, which maybe in the Bonely movie, he'll be the clean version, and when 2007 comes around, he now looks like dirty. I really like all this dirt on him, and I originally thought this was going to be a Japanese exclusive, but I guess not. And I definitely will pick this one up just because how accurate it is, but for the fans that actually did not get the original Bonely, definitely pick up this one because it's actually movie accurate. Well, that's all for this episode of Toy Analysis. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to join the Theorist Nation. Also, comment down below what Studio Series figures do you want and who is your favorite in this video. Well, this has been Trans Series saying, keep on theorizing. Well, you